live from the Quadrigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. Reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been serving the country, and we like all their finance and giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting mission building through its many sponsorships and programs including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA and the TAMCC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This is the GBN Television News for Friday, February 26th, 2021. I'm Trelawna Charles. Tonight in the headlines, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell says government's decision is not to encourage any formal carnival event. Alexandria Monroe of Mourn Fenue St. Patrick celebrates 100 years. The Inland Revenue Department encourages taxpayers to avoid long lines by paying their bills online. 24 young men to participate in Grand Coda's Rural Youth and empowerment program. Beverly has the sports and around the globe. Coming up in Around the Globe, cabinet members in the Nevis Island administration received the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. And the U.S. regulators say Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. In sports, final of the CG Insurance Super 50 Cup bowls off on the weekend, while West Indies announces squads for upcoming ODI and T20 series against Sri Lanka. Details right after this message. This is GBN, the nation's news leader. This segment is brought to you by Quartz Grenada Limited. We are all essential in the fight against COVID-19. At Courts, we're doing our part and we encourage you to stay at home, stay safe and shop online at www.shopcourts.com. For other convenience, our Courts online customers will receive free delivery and get up to 20% off televisions, appliances and homewares. Plus, if you shop with Ready Finance, you will pay nothing down for 60 days. Now, you can stay home, shop online, and save. Remember, do the essential. Wear a mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing, stop the spread. Good evening, this is GBN's News at 7. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell has proposed a formula for Grenada and its citizens to return to a level of normalcy. The vaccination of 60% of the population is the prerequisite formula, which the Prime Minister highlighted would be the same recipe in determining whether Spice Mask 2021 will be held. He added that masks may still be worn once the virus is around during that period. Gerard Joseph has the latest development. The diehard carnival revelers are seemingly yet again being given a second dose of reality as Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell on Friday said he is not optimistic about the hosting of Spice Mask 2021. I think it will be a mistake even if we are able to get, the, I don't see how we'll be able to achieve 60% um, vaccination by, by July but even if I think it's a mistake to have a mass event 
because you still have 40% of the people who would not have been um, vaccinated. Um, I, I don't think it's a smart thing. The first dose came last year, despite many in several circles calling for a total local carnival with the cancellation of Spice Mask 2020. This time around, as Grenada's vaccination rollout is in full swing, the COVID-19 jab seems not to be the only treatment with side effects, as Prime Minister Mitchell reiterated government's decision not to encourage any formal carnival. We asked the Ministry of Culture to meet with the various stakeholders and see what can be done to aid the pain, because there are many people lived and operated by their livelihood, by cultural activities. What can we do, like what we have done now for the, the Taxi Association? What can we do for the cultural artists and other people involved who, who live by the, the cultural activities in the country? The Prime Minister strongly hinted to the country returning to normalcy in the latter part of the year based on the 60% population vaccination formula and immunity to infection. You know, I did my first vaccination and on the 26th of March I'll have the second which means based on the research and scientific information I should be protected from 90% or more protection from any infection um, and if we can achieve this by September, October, with a vaccination program throughout the country. And I said, if, you have, if you're able to vaccinate 60% of the population, that, that, that methodology should yield um, a sort of implication that we can go back to business uh, as usual. He stated the unemployment impact in various sectors remains one of the major issues why they have asked public officers to defer their 4% salary increases. I am Gerard Joseph for GBN News. This week, we met 100-year-old Anastasia English of Plain St. Patrick. And today, just a few days later, we meet another centenarian. One more St. Patrick resident has gotten to the Big 100. More in this report. Alexandria Monroe, otherwise known as Miss Mami of Morn Fendu St. Patrick, is Grenada's newest centenarian. She celebrated with her friends and family at her home and was visited by the parliamentary representative for St. Patrick East, Pamela Moses, and representatives from the desk of the elderly in the Ministry of Housing and Social Development. Born February 26, 1921, Miss Monroe has no biological children but has one step daughter who she raised as her own and who takes care of her today. During her working days, she worked on the estate with her mother and cooked. Then she worked in agriculture for years until her retirement. Her family described her as a caretaker, saying a favorite pastime of hers was visiting the sick and vulnerable. As she celebrates her big day, she says she feels just fine. Very good. Thank God and thanks you all. Jesus pray for all of all you. For a little bit the same amount of years. Thank God. Miss mm. Monroe says she doesn't eat anything special, so she has to be thankful to God for her longevity. Praying to Jesus. All my prayers, everything is prayer, praying to Jesus to lengthen my life and my days and give me the light. And thanks to you all. Thanks everyone here that come to praise my name. Jesus leave me living still in this world. Health-wise, Miss Monroe only has a weakened eyesight to complain of. Her advice for the younger generation is to stay rooted in God. I want for them to have the same mind what Jesus gave me. I don't know if they will take it, but I, I could praise every, everyone and give them that blessing that God gave me for me to make that yes. But I am in now. Thank you, Jesus, and thanks you all. Despite her age, Miss Monroe is full of life and laughter. She's a lover of music and has the dance moves to prove it. The Inland Revenue Department is getting up to speed with technology, this time encouraging taxpayers to pay their taxes, vehicle licenses, among other services, online. The reminder comes as the deadline for tax payments is fast approaching. 
avoid the long lines, pay online using your debit or credit cards. The Inland Revenue Department of the Ministry of Finance instituted this method of payment in 2020, following the period of lockdown and the introduction of the COVID-19 protocols, which required the avoidance of too many people in one place at one time. Karen Morin Alexander, Public Relations Officer at the IRD, explained in details the process of payment. GOV.GD, you just click in, you go on to the internet, you type in k.gov.gd, then the website comes up, says make a payment, you click on that, and then you continue through the process. The instructions are very clear. Once you carry out what is expected of you, the requirements, you will get through, and it's like, it's a real game changer, that I say. Our platform is taxservices.gov.gd, where you have to register to become an e-user to use the service. And there you will pay uh, co-taxes. Uh, like Xander highlighted some of the payments that can be made online. Registration and um, driver's, driver's license, property tax, and you have a couple of other fees like marriage licenses. You also have... Um, COVID-19 related fees, just then to pay the licenses, vehicle license registration, as well as driver's licenses. We have since added property tax onto that platform. And then other services, other government services as well can be paid, paid on that platform. According to Mrs. Alexander, as it relates to vehicle registration, vehicle owners can make payments and proceed for inspection and collect the stickers from any of the inspection sites on the island. Receipts of payments, she added, will be emailed or sent directly to the customer's phone. Alexander says persons in the diaspora can also benefit through this online service. Christina John, GBN News. Non-functioning traffic lights continue to be a major hindrance to motorists and pedestrians in and around St. George's as well as the outer parishes and villages. Traffic wardens and police officers attached to the traffic department are frequently seen directing motorists in the town or Grand Anse area. This may soon be a thing of the past, according to the recent announcement by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. Oh, a lot of people have been complaining about the traffic lights in the country. I just want to report that the government will undertake a complete retrofitting of all traffic lights in the country. Tenders have been out since December and are scheduled to be submitted by the 28th of February, which of course is, is already almost there with us. This is News at 7. Coming up, more than 20 young men to engage in skills training. Stay with us. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Your hard work, talent and creativity, plus flow, equals more ways to chase your dreams. Flow is connecting all of Grenada, from Point Salines to Hillsborough, with the most reliable connection on the island. <laughs> so now everyone can work, study, and keep moving forward together. Visit discoverflow.co for more information. Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventist presents Good News Gospel Explosion with Evangelist Dr. Claudius Morgan. This life-changing gospel series begins on Friday, February 26th and continues nightly at 7 p.m. You can follow this series on Mission Life Grenada via YouTube and Facebook. You can also follow on GrenadaAdventist.org, Flow Channel 31, that's 3 ABN, GFN Radio, 91.3 FM and 100.3 FM, GBB Ministries, 
and download the Bovi Bible Seminars app. There will be good gospel singing, prayer sessions, special features, dynamic and powerful preaching from the man of God. Come hear interesting topics such as out on bail and torn between two lovers. Above all, God will offer the free gift of salvation. Good news, gospel explosion. It will be thrilling and exciting. It takes a village to raise our children into productive citizens and progressive communities. It takes a village to provide support to our young people who are going down the wrong path and need family and community support. It takes a village to help our children who have made a mistake to take responsibility and learn from their mistakes. It takes a village to actively help in the rehabilitation of our youth, to assist them in being productive, to reintegrate back into our communities. It takes a village to care about each other, to lift up our children and make them into better adults. It, it takes, takes a, a village, village to give our youths a chance for change. Join the movement and give our children a chance for change. This message is brought to you by the USAID OECS Juvenile Justice Reform Project 2, funded by the United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to oecs.org forward slash JJRP. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me. Maybe it's your smiles and the way you tell me it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible. I can pack my sack. I can take the long road. Cause it's okay to look back if I am scared. I know you're. is Ariza. Your financial freedom. Your future. Brace yourselves because on Sunday, February 28th from 6 p.m. Get set for another massive Wackety Virtual Bingo! The Backyard Edition. And this time, you can win a whopping $20,000! Are you kidding me right now? No joke! $20,000 US dollars! And tickets are only $20 US dollars! In Grenada, tickets are available at GoToFed.com or numerous box offices island-wide or at our main office on Bruce Street Mall. If your overseas tickets are only available on Go to fed.com remember this time we're playing in our backyards so it's gonna be more fun and more excitement sunday february 28th get ready for waggity virtual bingo the new way to play bingo welcome back the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the value of hands-on skills and with an increase in unemployment, this need has become more urgent. Grand Coda's Rural Youth Empowerment Program is giving more than 20 young men an opportunity to engage in skills training. Details in this report. Over 20 young men will begin training under Grand Coda's Rural Youth Empowerment Program in the area of small engine repair, outboard motor repair and maintenance. The training will run for nine months with one month of personal development training and computer, six months of technical training and two months on the job training. The 24 young men who enrolled in the program as well as officials from Grand Coda were present for the orientation ceremony. Guests included Parliamentary Representative for St. Patrick West, Anthony Boson, while addressing the participants, Boson strengthened the need for having the right education to improve the economic situation in developing countries. Many of you are here because our education system has failed us and failed us badly. That's a fact. You should not be here. Because many of you passed 18, 18, 19 years and now it's like a second chance. Education is the driving force for economic development and progress. 
And if you do not have the right education, chances are you will be left behind. He applauded Grand Coda for the initiative at a time when the youth have been in the deep end due to the pandemic. He added that Grenada has focused for far too long on the academic side of education, while the need for skills training was downplayed. Millions and millions of dollars we spend on the importation of machinery, like cars, like engines. And when you look around the country, you see the place is strewn with vehicles, you have a problem with a piece of equipment, we can't find the solution, we discard it. We still believe, we still hold dear the fact that when you go to secondary school, your primary aim must be to graduate to 12, 14, 15 subjects. That's when you are recognized. Yeah, that's what the education system tells us, because that's who they emulate. Those who get 16, 14, 15 subjects. And chances are, those with the 12, 13 subjects cannot find a job. The participants of the program said the opportunity was something they always looked forward to, adding that the training would be highly beneficial to them and their future endeavors. I'm very excited to begin this program because I was waiting for the opportunity very long to be able to attend the program with, a, um, with the help and assistance from someone. I know that uh, Grand Coda came up with the initiative. I'm very excited and I'm very, uh, let's say, I'm eager to learn a lot more to be able to further go ahead and start my own business so I can do this kind of work and employ others who, are, who came here as well. I think that it will help me in the near future to come, that I can better myself and be a better person to my community. The orientation ceremony was held at the Moncraven Resource Center. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. YouthBase is a platform created to assist youth entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 35, providing them with training, financing, and support for their small businesses. Persons who have received financing were brought up to speed on how best to manage their businesses. More in this, June Paul reports. Thursday, February 25th, small business operators participated in the first quarterly workshop for 2021 held at the National Stadium. The workshop targeted beneficiaries who have received financing through the small business program YouthBiz within the Division of Youth Development. Damani Brison, facilitator of the workshop, spoke of the importance of bookkeeping and the expected outcome of the sessions. At the end of this session, they should have or they should be able to to establish their bookkeeping system if they don't have one yet, or if they have one, they could fine tune it and eventually they'll be able to prepare their financial statement. So they would know how their business is doing and it would be, better, it would be beneficial to all of us. The, they'll be able to um, file proper reports to government, um, the bank or the funding agencies would have proper information. Beneficiaries share on their takeaway from the workshop. We do bookkeeping, but today I will start to do more in-depth stuff, you understand? So I get to understand what is really or how it should really be done, you understand? And trust me, a lot of information, but it was good at the end. Today's session, it's, it's a work in progress, not just for me, but for my honor colleagues, trainees. It's a way of keeping us abreast with time. It's not just bookkeeping, it's keeping us abreast with time. We need to know how things flow. We need to know whether or not we are making a profit or a loss, if this can bring home food on our table, if we can give back to the community for what they have done for us. Because remember, without customers, they are the ones that bring it in. Without them, we, we, we are like any other person. You know, we need their, we need their support. And so community give back is very much important. So in keeping records, records is just to say, okay, I have done this and you have done it properly. A series of quarterly meetings for youth business beneficiaries commenced in 2019. To date, over 100 businesses on island have received funding from youth biz. Youth biz is a one-stop shop for youth entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 35 and provides training, financing and support to aspiring and established small businesses. Reporting for the Division of Youth Development, I am June Paul. 
After complaints from fisher folk and farmers' representative in the Senate, Roderick St. Clair's appeal to government about the non-functioning ice machines, government is addressing their requests. The fisher folk in government have already had their answers after years without ice machines and cold storage. The supervisor of the market, Naidanu Joseph, expressed his satisfaction. I feel very happy. I feel very happy to know that, that, the, that the ministry is listening to, the, the, especially the fishers, that they, on that level. Because a lot of the times um, when you hear fishermen speak, they always, they, they, they don't trust people at, at that level, at, at, politics, at the politics level and at, at, at government ministry levels. They always think that these people don't have their best interests at heart. And it's, it's, it's good to know that the, the minister and the PS listened and they, they got on the ball and, and now this, this problem is resolved. Yeah, I am very pleased that it, it, it worked out so, so quickly and um, now we are, we, are operate, we are operating the way we should operate and everything is going to be fine at least in our ability to provide so, the service that the fishermen need, I, at the ice and cold storage. Commercial refrigeration and technician Emmanuel Bain spoke about the work undertaken. When I arrived and started, I do a, firstly I do an assessment at the machines and then when I begin working, I realized most of the equipment was out of line. There was no arm, there was no balance. They had parts that was um, broken that need replacing and that sort of thing. You need gas also, you need gas. We had a couple of leaks that we found, we repaired that to replace the parts. And now we're in the testing phase. Some we think we completed and some we just doing the final um, touch, in, touch up today. We changed the, um, the pressure switches in it. We repair leaks and we regas re re the system, vacuum and regas the system to be precise. Fishermen say the problem now addressed will benefit the entire community. And now we turn our attention to what has been creating a buzz on social media. Let's take a look around the platform. This is Social Buzz, where we shine a light on the thoughts and concerns of our online audience. Residents near the Chinese low-income housing project in Bushezhou have been complaining about the pollution of the area by the on-site workers. The stench from the sewer, mosquitoes from stagnant water, and rodent infestation are at the top of a long list of issues faced. When asked about the issue, the chief environment officer in the Ministry of Health, Andrew Warm, had this response. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with those issues. They have not been reported to 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 the environmental health department to see. So I think the Ministry of Works speak with the chief technical officer with regards to that. Uh, the Ministry of Works for an environmental issue? Well, they, they have not referred it. Um, and, and, and as far as I know, the housing scheme at Bouchezou is still under construction. I'm not occupied. So how that person has a problem? Our online audience had plenty to say. Anthony commented, come on, government of Grenada, we can do better than this. Keep our country clean and healthy. June commented, this type of situation can cause cancer. Get together, citizens, and get petitions going. You can't just complain. Take to the news. Action, not complaining, gets the job done. Karen added, when you are poor, you are exposed. If it was an elite person, one call would have done the trick. But with the poor man, Minister and PS of Health, Environmental Health, don't know. They're just transferring their duties to someone else. It is like sending the fool further on. Francis added, something like this happening in a country and no one in government knows. Wow. Only the citizens know. So just let the citizens run the country. All of them, when they get elected, they sit in a chair all day long and not going out into the neighborhood to address any issues within the neighborhood. And Roger wrote, it all boils down to the lack of proper planning and what makes matters worse, that's an ongoing issue that could be resolved. It's obvious that we have people in positions that can't perform their civic duties. 
that's it for tonight's social buzz. If you would like to have your thoughts and concerns shared, be sure to comment on GBN's Facebook page. From the thought process to the visual impact, it's time to take a peek through the GBN ISO lens. A good eye captures all. GBN ISO is brought to you by Clairvision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight we have an unusual helper in the garden. Pablo, our reporter's dog, is captured helping out by gathering cocoa as they fall from the tree. They say a dog is a man's best friend. Pablo also proves to be a man's right hand and co-worker. Kudos to the duo. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. Still ahead, St. George's University donates fire safety equipment to the Royal Grenada Police Force. This is News at 7. paper, linen paper, bond paper maybe, or lunch bags, maybe a gift set, or maybe you just don't show, then visit us today, Cairn or Bookstore. We are so much more than your regular bookstore. Visit us at the corner of Scotch and Young Street, or give us a call, 420-5307, or 321 Cairn or Bookstore. Convenience, quality, excellent prices. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. You want a hand sanitizer to do three things. Kill germs, be gentle, and to go where you go. You can get all of that in our hand sanitizer. Hard on germs, gentle on hands, affordable. Remember, hand sanitizers contain alcohol. Keep away from heat and flames and avoid contact with eyes. Available at retailers island-wide. A message by the Grenada Distillers Limited. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Boy, line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go tote your materials. <laughs> hey, man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. We understand it can be hard getting from the bus terminal to the Karani James Athletic Stadium just to get your fresh fruits and veggies. But guess what? Your troubles are over. Enjoy a free bus shuttle from the bus terminal to the temporary market at the Karani James Stadium every Friday and Saturday until the end of March. Let us buy local, eat local, and support our local market vendors.
Have you ever felt the need to give back to your vegetable or flower garden, lawn, potted plants, or planters? The Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority is pleased to introduce the new Home Garden Composter, a neat, efficient, quick, and easy start to home composting. Get great value from your food scraps, grass, lawn clippings, paper waste, and animal manure through home composting. When you do, you will be returning valuable nutrients to the earth rather than discarding at the landfills. Get started with a home garden composter, now available at Grenada Solid Solid Waste Management Authority and let your home garden composter make your gardening dreams come true. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. Paying is faster and easier with Flow Fast Pay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash fastpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details. Along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Blow. Keeping you connected. Welcome back. The St. George's University's Department of Public Safety and Security donated fire safety equipment to the Royal Grenada Police Force. ACP Jessmon Prince, speaking on behalf of the police force, said this will enhance their firefighting capabilities throughout the country. We've already deployed fire appliances in um, Sotez, St. Patrick's, St. Mark's, uh, St. John's, St. George's, of course, um, Caricou. Uh, we still have outstanding Pete Martinique and St. David's. At the moment, they are uh, retrofitting St. David's to accommodate a new fire plants. I say new because it's coming to Grenada for the first time, but it's not a new machine. It's a, it's a used machine that is coming to Grenada for the first time, and it will be deployed in St. David's in the not too distant future. So those equipment that we're getting from the St. George's University cannot come at a better time. The impact on life and livelihoods since the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus continues to pose a challenge for the business community. The latest to disclose its challenges is Osprey Lines, which have management discussing the way forward. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted, if not crippled, several businesses in just over a year. The Osprey Lines, like other businesses, is struggling to stay afloat. Osprey Lines Limited provides a useful ferry service between Grenada and its sister islands of Caracou and Petey Martinique almost daily. According to the owner, Mr. Glenn Clement, who preferred not to entertain an on-camera interview with GBN, said the volume of passengers has dropped significantly by about 60 percent, forcing the company to reduce traveling days to three days per week. During this week, Osprey suffered another blow, encountering major problem with their boat engine. The recent increase in gas prices is another factor affecting travel for the company. However, a decision on whether or not the cost of travel will increase has not yet been decided upon. The main concern now, he says, is how they intend to navigate forward. Christina John. GBN News. Stay with us for sports and what's happening in the region. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. Hills and Valley.
Family Pharmacy offers both wholesale and retail pharmaceutical and over-the-counter products. We have the most competitive and affordable prices. We are the agents for Vit Plus Multivitamin for healthy everyday lifestyle and Sonatogen powder. Hills and Valley Pharmacy supplies the best quality, name brand clinical products such as Rescue Oil, Bio Oil, Neutrogena, Aveno and Clarosin. We offer the most convenient opening hours. Our telephone numbers are 435-6904 or 6903. Remember, at Hills and Valley Pharmacy, your health is our business. We care. Now open Hills and Valley Medicare Center, your one stop for medical supplies, massage therapy, physiotherapy, and an in house physician. At Hills and Valley, your health is our business. Tropical shipping is fast and reliable, always on time, safe and affordable. Friendly staff here to connect you. Tropical worldwide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hassle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load with tropical shipping, so we ship everything. I can't wait. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to island life. Do you know what time it is? You guessed right. It's detox time again. At Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. Purchase our seven-day cleansing pack for only $500. Includes everything you need for a complete total body cleanse. Cleanse your blood, kidney, liver, and colon. This cleanse will help you lighten up and get rid of the excess also available are our special product detox combo pack for only $100 try our single detox products starting from $40 check us out now Belmont St. George's close to the Fall Edge area or call us on 231-6642-449-7753 or 418-7115 Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store Detox your way to health. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. This is the weather for tonight and the next few days. Tonight's minimum temperature is expected to be 24.5 degrees Celsius. The weather is expected to be partly cloudy, windy and hazy with light to moderate showers. Winds east northeastly to eastly at 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting higher at times. Seas moderate to rough, waves 6 to 9 feet in open water. A marine advisory remains in effect. Tides low at 9.30 p.m., high at 4 a.m. On Saturday, the weather is expected to be partly cloudy, windy and hazy with light to moderate showers. On Sunday, mostly fair and windy with light to moderate showers in the morning and overnight. And on Monday, the weather ex is expected to be mostly fair and windy with light to moderate morning showers.
Morning Sporting fans, it will be a battle of the Southern Caribbean for the Sir Clive Lloyd Trophy when Guyana Jaguars face off with the unbeaten Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in the CG Insurance Super 50 final on Saturday after the Guyanese comfortably defeated the Windward Island Volcanoes in the second semi-final. Playing on Thursday at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, Guyana's victory was first set up by a magnificent century from Shimron Hetmeyer, who was deservedly named the CG Insurance Man of the match. He scored his seventh list A century of 112 and it came off 80 balls with 11 fours and five sixes. He was well supported by Raymond Rifa who made a career best 90 of 104 balls with eight fours and three sixes. The left-handed pair boosted the Jaguars to 305 for seven, the third 300 plus total in the tournament. Then on the floodlights leading cricket taker Leading wicket taker Gudakesh Martin, 53 for 4, led the charge with the ball as the windwards were routed for 210 all out in 46.4 overs. Cricket West Indies selection panel today named the West Indies squads for the CG Insurance T20 International Series, which includes Grenada's Andre Fletcher and CG Insurance One Day International Series against Sri Lanka at the Coolidge Cricket Ground and Sir Vivian Rigid Stadium. Chris Gale, the most prolific batsman in T20 history and experienced fast bowler Fidel Edwards have been named in the T20I squad, marking their return to the international stage, while off-spinner Kevin Sinclair earns his first West Indies selection and left-arm spinner Akil Hussein gets his first T20I call-up. All-rounder Andre Russell is still recovering from contracting COVID-19 earlier this month and despite testing negative over a week ago, was ruled out of the T20Is by the CWI medical panel whilst he completes his return to play protocols. Fast bowlers Sheldon Cottrell and O'Shane Thomas along with batsman Shimron Hetmeyer and all-rounder Roston Chase all failed to reach the minimum fitness standard in time for selection consideration. They will all remain in Antigua after the CGI insurance and Super 50 Cup to work on their fitness and conditioning. That's it for sports. The Around the Globe is next. Now for the probe around the globe, cabinet members in the Nevis Island administration received the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine on Wednesday. It was broadcast on live TV. The premier said he is taking the first step to show that the vaccine is safe and the only way they can pass the COVID-19 pandemic. Details in this report. The first vaccine was received by Premier of Nevis and Senior Minister of Health, the Honorable Mark Brantley. Immediately following the vaccination distribution, Premier Brantley delivered brief remarks. And today is a very historic day for us because the entire cabinet, led by myself as Premier and uh, certain uh, frontline workers, health professionals, we all took the step of getting vaccinated against COVID-19. The AstraZeneca vaccine is the vaccine that we have. And we have demonstrated that it's safe and that it is the only way to get our people past this COVID-19 pandemic. I'm delighted that all of our cabinet colleagues have come out to lead by example and to show the population that there is absolutely no risk. Uh, I did it first. I consider that I was the first to be vaccinated on the island of Nevis. The, it was painless. It was easy. It was very quick. And I'm happy now to have my card saying that I've had the first shot of the vaccine. So certainly we look forward to the rest of the population getting vaccinated. And we know that nobody's safe until everybody's safe. So we encourage one and all to go out and get vaccinated. Let's fight this COVID-19 pandemic together and let's continue to keep Nevis and the Federation safe. Don't wait! 
vaccinate, vaccinate. Deputy Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, Junior Minister of Health, the Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, as well as other cabinet members received the vaccine live on Nevis television. A number of frontline workers also received the vaccine, including Medical Chief of Staff Dr. Cardell Rollins, Medical Officer of Health Dr. Judy Nisbet, District Medical Officer Dr. Shandy Jacob, and other healthcare and security professionals. The officials received their first vaccine today and will receive their second vaccine May of 2021. Freddie Celebre reporting for the Nevis Newscast. Further afield, U.S. regulators say Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective, a key milestone on the path towards giving Americans access to the first such shot to work in a single dose. The vaccine was 72% effective in the U.S.-based trial arm of its global study of more than 43,000 participants. Food and Drug Administration staff wrote in a document that summarized the company's results and confirmed findings the J&J released earlier this month month. More in this report. The data released today by Johnson & Johnson suggests its vaccine would provide serious new firepower in the war against COVID. The vaccine, it says, was 72% effective in the United States at preventing COVID, far better than the yearly flu vaccine. While Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines are 95% effective, J&J's candidate was also 82% effective against the dangerous South African strain and 100% effective at preventing COVID-related hospitalizations and deaths. A single dose that can be stored in a normal refrigerator. Already, FDA staff have endorsed the vaccine. Now an outside advisory panel will decide whether to approve emergency use authorization, or EUA. If the EUA is granted, we will waste no time getting this life-saving vaccine into the arms of Americans. j, &J says it's prepared to ship 4 million doses immediately, 20 million by the end of March. Dr. Dan Baruch led much of the vaccine research at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. All of these vaccines are highly safe and highly effective, and people should get the first vaccine they're offered. J&J says it has no reports of allergic reactions. Already, Pfizer and Moderna say they're on track to administer 3 million daily doses by April. Adding the Johnson vaccine would ramp that up even further. Tonight, more mass vaccination sites are opening up in Texas, Georgia, Massachusetts, and New York. Just as researchers in San Francisco report finding a a more contagious homegrown strain of the virus, more resistant to COVID antibodies. Now, Moderna says it's sending the NIH a new version of its vaccine and a booster, which could protect against the South African variant. And tonight, the Biden administration says it is shipping more than 25 million cloth masks to people in low income areas who struggle to buy. That's a probe on a globe. Stay with us for a recap of the headlines. Now to recap tonight's headlines, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell says government's decision is not to encourage any formal carnival events. Alexandria Monroe of Mount Fendi St. Patrick celebrates 100 years. The Inland Revenue Department encourages taxpayers to avoid long lines by paying their bills online. 24 young men to participate in Grand Coda's Rural Youth Empowerment Program. In around the globe, cabinet ministers in the Nevis Island administration received AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines. And U.S. regulators say Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. In sports, the final of the CG Insurance Super 50 Cup bowls off on the weekend, while West Indies announced squads for the upcoming ODI and T20 series against Sri Lanka. If you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Charlana Charles. That's the news. We'll see you again. Good night.